Recording by Raven Notation The Salesman by Waldo T. Boyd Salesman's Guide, Rule 2 The modern 1995 customer who enters Tracy's department store is not always right, but as far as you are concerned, he is. The little green cue light blinked three times. Trevor Anson arranged his tie at just the natally precise angle, waved his hand before a hidden lighting effect switch in the smooth marble pillar at the entrance to the display room, and faced the elevator. This would be a green light customer, a first-time prospect, and three blinks indicated a very difficult individual. Anson quickly practiced his most beguiling smile. Welcome to Tracy's Roboid Department, he said enthusiastically, as the elevator doors slid open. His practice smile was just right. He quickly noted the man's conservative dress, the flaming red tie. Aggressive type, Anson decided. A shock of red hair that didn't want to lie down hinted that he was stubborn as well. Heard you've got a sale on robots, Red Tie said challengingly, as he stepped aside for his wife. The woman who stepped off the elevator smiled, showing a lovely dimple, and Anson beamed on her. The tiny flake of a hat perched atop her auburn hair reminded Anson of the comb on a Rhode Island Red. Not robots, sir, Anson corrected diplomatically. The plasticast roboid is not exactly a robot. Well, anyhow, trot one out and let's see what it looks like. Millicent will never be satisfied until she's seen one of the things. He glared dramatically in the general direction of his wife, who pretended not to notice. Anson led them into the grey room. He mentally went over the applicable rule. Rule 23. Always introduce the marked down merchandise first. It may provide the customer with an incentive for buying something better. These are last year's models, he said with just the right flavour of distaste in his voice. Of course, you may expect a slight reduction, a small percentage. Red Tie was muttering, damned mechanical things, full of wheels and wires. What's to keep him from running amok and killing us all? But dear, they don't have wheels any more protested the woman timidly. Her face was pretty, Anson decided, but it was obvious that the man would be the deciding factor in this sale. He made a mental note. Rule 31. Pick the individual of a family group who seems to hold the deciding voice and sell. He remembered a portion of the sales talk he had memorized a few days before, and took it up, almost chanting, Our roboids are grown, much as crystals are grown, in great vats in New Chicago. A plastic cast roboid is guaranteed a fat chance we'd have of collecting the guarantee if we were chopped into mincemeat, Red Tie interrupted, shuddering slightly as the implication of his own words hit him. Anson felt a moment of panic as he failed to remember an applicable rule from the salesman's guide, but it formed in his head at the last moment. Rule 18 Never argue with a customer. Change the subject. Why don't you come with me to the green room? He asked. The very latest models are on display. He walked slowly at first, then more quickly as the couple allowed themselves to be led. He slid his hand near a hidden switch in the archway, and the floodlights came on just as they entered. The woman uttered a little squeal of delight at the sight of a very handsome figure dressed in a cutaway, standing in an attitude of service. Oh, she breathed dreamily, he would make such a wonderful butler. Well, wind him up and let's see what he'll do, growled the man, his face florid in the coloured light of the green room. I'm so very sorry, Anson said, slightly flustered remembering that this was always the crucial moment in a sale. The roboid cannot be activated for demonstration purposes. What? roared Red Tie incredulously. 
do you mean to say you want me to buy the damn thing without knowing whether it ticks or not anson tried desperately to remember the best rule for such an answer but failed he plunged desperately into his own explanation you see our roboids are matched to your family personality at the time of purchase and activated then we cannot erase a personality once it has been transferred to their sensitive minds he saw the disbelieving smirk on the man's mouth and felt that the sale was indeed lost but he plunged on desperately they're very economical they don't require any upkeep like food when they become tired they will sit or lie down near an electric outlet and plug in a power cord and in a few moments they are as rested and tireless as bosh red tie retorted i've heard enough come millicent we still have time to try bond's new helio rotor at least they'll give us a demonstration anson escorted them to the magna lift he felt better as he recalled the last rule in the guide the one that seemed to cover the situation so well rule fifty if they balk because of the no demonstration rule let them go they will be back when they have seen one of their friends with a plastic roboid. Goodbye, sir, madam, Anson said wearily, as the magna lift doors closed. Come again soon. He breathed a sigh of relief as the elevator cage dropped them from sight. A salesman, who had been standing by, spoke to Anson. People are such dears at times, aren't they? he said. However, it's time for your rest period. I'll take over now. Thank you so much, Anson replied tiredly. He walked to a tiny room at the far end of the great showroom and closed the door. He stretched wearily out on a low, folding cot, the only piece of furniture, and reached for a tiny black power cord hanging nearby. Deftly, he plugged it into the socket under his armpit and breathed deeply, relaxedly. Yes, he chanted softly, drifting off to sleep. People are such dears sometimes. End of the Salesman by Waldo T. Boyd